How vast beyond all measure That He should give His only Son To make a wretch His treasure How great the pain of searing loss The Father turned His face away As wounds which mar the Chosen One Bring many sons to glory Behold the man upon a cross My sin upon his shoulders Ashamed I hear my mocking voice Call out among the scoffers It was my sin that held him there Until it was accomplished His dying breath has brought me life I know that it is finished I will not boast in anything No gifts, no power, no wisdom But I will boast in Jesus Christ His death and resurrection Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer But this I know with all my heart His wounds have paid my ransom I will not boast in anything No gifts, no power, no wisdom but I will boast in Jesus Christ For His wounds and pain my ransom Yes, I will boast in Jesus Christ For His wounds and pain my ransom All right, grab your Bibles with me this evening as you've noticed, Ronnie's not here, which I forgot about till this afternoon. And then on the way home from lunch, my wife said, hey, don't forget, you're singing the special tonight. And I said, oh, all right, go to Mark, the book of Mark this evening, chapter 16, Mark 16, what a wonderful day. I, I'm just, I am full, amen. I, I'm excited. Um, just the worship, just everything this morning just touched my heart, my spirit. I'm, I'm just happy. I'm happy to be in church tonight. I'm excited about um, people getting saved. Amen. I, I'm excited about proclaiming Christ. Mark 16, verse number 6, and it says, And he said unto them, Be not affrightened, ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him, as he saith unto you. Let's pray, and we'll get into this this evening. Lord, again, we're just thankful for this morning. Just what a wonderful service we had. Lord, I'm so grateful for what Easter, Easter represents. Lord, I'm so grateful for my salvation tonight. Lord, I'm just so grateful for the opportunity to serve you. Lord, I, as we approach uh, your word tonight, I pray that you pour out your spirit on us. I pray that we hear from you, not from me, Lord, but from you tonight. 
Lord, be with this, this time together. And we ask you to bless it now in Jesus' name. Amen. You ever come across a sign in the middle of a road? Road closed. Many of you say, yeah, today, trying to get to church. <laughs> Right? We, we, we come across these signs uh, pretty often, and you know it, it's pretty frustrating at times because they're so descriptive, aren't they? I mean, they tell you why the road's closed. They, they tell you which direction you should go. They, they, they tell you uh, the alternate routes that you should be taking. That, no. No, they say road closed. And it's frustrating. Right? Especially... Oh, careful. <laughs> okay, especially uh, um, as somebody who might live down that road, somebody who might work down that road, uh, somebody who might just need to get down that road uh, for uh, unforetold circumstances, and, and they, they come across these signs, and I tell you, they're just, they're just my favorite. Right, for the past month and uh, for the months ahead, I come across a sign every day just about on my way to work. Road closed. You know, we come across signs and, and sometimes people will say things to us and be like, wow, that's pretty vague. <laughs> Could you give me a little more description? Could you give me a little more understanding to that? You know, I, I think of this uh, 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 portion of scripture and we can read the different perspectives from the different disciples of Christ right uh, throughout the gospels here. And, and, and Mark, he records as, as Mary Magdalene and, and Mary, the mother of Christ, they come to the tomb, right? They have their ointments, they have their spices, they want to anoint the body. I mean, we can read, uh, they're talking to each other. How in the world are we going to get the stone moved? And then they get there and the stone's already moved. Wait a minute. We didn't do it. The, the boys have decided, hey, they're, they're still back in, in, in town. And they come up to there, and now there's this angel sitting there, and he says, why, why are you here? Right? Who, who are you seeking? What's he say in verse number six? He says, and he says, and be not affrighted, ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He's not here. Oh. Could you give me some more? Could, could, could you give me some more details? I mean, I understand. He goes on, he says, hey, uh, we can look in Luke and says, hey, remember what he told you. Right? And, 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 but at this time, at this moment, they're pulling up. I mean, how many people have come up to a, the road close sign here on 158? And then you realize, oh, yeah, that's right. They're, they're widening the road. Oh, yeah, I remember that now. Well, that moment was here for them and, and they come up and man, those signs sometimes, those vague descriptions, man, it can bring some frustration. It can bring some confusion, that aggravation. Say, why in the world? I, I can imagine uh, getting to the tomb before anybody and be like, what in the world is going on? Man, if I was in this position and I did not, uh, for whatever reason, okay, uh, it, it doesn't necessarily uh, uh, describe in full detail why the, the, the disciples just chose not to listen to Christ. How many times he told them, I am going to be crucified, right? I'm going to be raised up. Hey, my life is going to be laid down. All of these things, but I will come again. I will come again. I will. And they get there and they're like, man, and I can imagine myself getting there. I'd be, I'd be upset. I mean, this was the man that I followed after. This was the man who taught me, my master, my teacher. This was the man who was, who was telling me all these wonderful things. I saw him perform beautiful miracles. Now all of a sudden he's gone. Who done took him? Right? We're going after him. Bree saw my fight stance the other night. <laughs> we were, uh, I was doing that to Corbin. Corbin's like, he just walked the other way. He's like, whatever, brother Daniel. We were out handing out flyers. I'm like, come on, Corbin. He's way over there. He's like, eh. <laughs> very intimidating. But think about it, right? Imagine yourself arriving at the tomb of your master. You, you're arriving at the tomb of, of your teacher, right? That, that stone is rolled away. Your master's gone. The tomb is empty. And all you get is he is risen. What are you thinking in that moment? Where, where, where are you coming from in your, your emotional state? That's, that, that's not an explanation, angel man. That, that's a declaration. 
He is risen. Amen. Yeah. We can say amen. Glory to God. We know the whole story. But man, she's arriving at the tomb. That, that, that's just, you're just telling me? You're not going to tell me anything? Road closed? That's not an explanation. City of Bonner Springs. Why is this happening? I mean, how, how easy would it have been to take the wrong road from this point? Right? I, I mean, it would have been easy. Think, think of the, t- the moment you come up to those road closed signs and you're thinking, oh. Can you imagine being new to the area. Right, man, we've been here five years now, thankfully. I've traveled that road enough, but honestly, I've never gone all the way down the road that they want us to go down. I don't even know what road that is. 163rd or something like that. 66, I was close. But close doesn't cut it, right? And imagine how difficult or how easily, rather, it would have been to take the wrong detour. If all we came up to was road closed and you got different roads going different directions. I mean, I, I, I get an idea of the general area that I'm trying to get to. Think of, think of how scripture put us. Hey, there's going to be people. There's going to be preachers. There's going to be uh, uh, people who proclaim Christ and are going to get up and they're going to resemble Christ. But lack the power thereof. Hey, hey, Christ isn't going to be necessarily there. Hey, look in Matthew, one of the saddest portions of Scripture, right? Many will say unto me in that day, have I not prophesied in their name? Have I not cast out demons? And, and he's going to look at them and say, depart from me. I never knew you. Why? Because there might have been one point where they came up to a, a position. Maybe they came to a church. Maybe they came to a friend. And there was just no explanation They didn't know which way to go from that. Man, I I, I don't like to admit this. I have gotten lost once or twice driving. It doesn't happen often. My wife might disagree with that. But really, if I drive somewhere once, I can get there again typically. Right? It's just natural. It's like, oh, okay, that's where you live. Okay, I'm going back. Okay? It's just that. I'm just that good. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Okay, but there have been times I'm going to somebody's house. I think of uh, a former youth pastor at the church I was called to full-time ministry out of. And he lived way out in past surprise a little bit, right? Way out there in Arizona from where we lived. I was like, man, I got to go out to his house. And I got a little turned around, right? There there have been times here in uh, Kansas, Arizona, in Kansas, right? We're going somewhere. Maybe I'm going on a visit. Maybe I'm going to pick something up. And I say, I have no clue where I'm going. Right? And people always like to give you directions, right? Listen, just go to 166, take a left. When you get down about three streets, turn right again. You're going to be on this road. And once you get to the next road, which is this road, you're going to turn here. I don't know what those roads are. And hey, if I'm going to 166, down 32 here, I'm not going 15 miles an hour so I can read all the street signs. Man, how easy would it have been for Mary and Mary, right? Then they get to the tomb and they say, he's not here. And they say, what in the world? And now all of a sudden, they go the completely wrong directions. Man, the apostles started to, didn't they? Christ had to, hey, come on, boy, let's eat. And guess what? It's me. Whoa, wait, what? How many people turn from Christ How many people turn away from the proper road, right? Because they never actually experience. And think about this, okay? Mary and Mary here, maybe they were struggling with the idea and and, and it doesn't quite work for them, okay? But maybe they've never really experienced dead things coming back to life. And I mean, (laughs) obviously, okay. Mary understood that, her brother Lazarus. But maybe tonight there's people who are turning away from Christ because they don't understand this resurrection. They they don't understand what took place. They can't comprehend the power, the love, the display, everything that went into the crucifixion, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. But we can look at this, and, and we have to understand tonight, because Christ has been raised... 
Right, let, let's uh, go with me to the first Corinthians. We'll read a few verses here and I'll finish that thought. First Corinthians, let's read this passage in chapter 15. First Corinthians chapter number 15. We'll begin in verse number 12. And this, we can see the importance of Christ's resurrection right here. 1 Corinthians 15, beginning in verse number 12, says, Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? Okay, but if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain? And your faith is also vain? Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ whom he raised not up if so be that the dead raised not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised? And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Man, he's saying, listen, isn't this important? Hey, how can, how can some of you, verse number 12, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? I think a lot of people are walking around churches, but they never truly experience dead things coming back to life. Right? I mean, I mean, we can look to Mary, right? And, and we understand Lazarus uh, come forth. Lazarus was raised. This, we can look throughout scripture and we can see different people that through the power of the Holy Spirit, the inner workings of God, right? They were raised back from the dead. But there's a lot of modern day Christians. Listen, Christ not be, might not raise up grandma, brother, sister, loved one, close friend. But understanding the power of the resurrection goes so much deeper than that because through the power of the resurrection, he hath quickened us. What does that word quicken? Brought back to life. What does that mean? He's restored our spiritual connection. It has been reunited with our God in heaven. We were dead in our trespasses and sins. I was a slave to my sinful nature. But now, through the resurrected power of Jesus Christ, we spoke of that this morning, that precious gift of laying himself down, paying for my sin, offering me the opportunity of eternity. When I accept that, I am now restored. I'm brought back to life in relation with my heavenly father. Yippee, right? I mean, that's awesome. Now, now I'm brought back. And because Christ has been raised, our sins are forgiven. They're washed away. Right? They're gone forever. He says, I remember them no more. Cast them as far as the east from the west. Right? This morning, hey, I look at you justified. I love that. Justified. That's a cool word. Justified. Right, we mentioned the definition this morning. It's a simple Brother Daniel definition that a lot of people use. It wasn't my definition, but I'm too simple to give you the full one right now. Just as if I've never sinned. Justified. When God looks at me, he sees the restored, me being brought back to life. Brought to life in him. I now have the ability, the capability of sharing him with those around me. Why? Because he wants nothing more than for us to share this resurrective power with those in whom we love. Think of this morning. This morning. <laughs> Think of this evening. It's been a long weekend. Think this evening, right? Imagine with me uh, uh, those moments in your life. You say, Brother Daniel, I've never truly experienced, and we're talking salvation right now in the aspect, have you ever received Christ and received that newness, that fullness, that understanding of being brought back to life? There's power in that. Ephesians chapter four, I just thought of this, was trying to turn there. Think of this, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness, wherefore putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members one of another. 
Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither, neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the things which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Man, how important it is for us who, who have been made new. When Christ rolls, he was in his glorified state. Right? That's why when some of the apostles were trying to touch, he said, I can't touch you. I have yet to go to my Father. I'm in my glorified state. Listen, as somebody who has accepted Christ Jesus, we have been made new. We are a new creature. We need to act like it. We, we need to look at uh, uh, these road clothes signs, so to speak, that other people are running into. We know the descriptions. But how many people face something like the topic of salvation? Like the topic of new birth, you must be born again. And it gets totally detoured. I don't know what that means to be born again. Right? I, I mean, Zacchaeus asked the perfect question. What? Am I supposed to go back in my mom's womb when I'm old? Right? What are you talking about? Uh, uh, did I say Zacchaeus? Did I say it wrong? I heard somebody whisper. Okay. <laughs> Nicodemus. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's been a long day. Okay, but think about it in your life. We, we need to get to a point when we're detouring people back to Christ. We, we, we understand, man, they're, they're facing a whole plethora in our society today of detours. Okay, they come to a place like the tomb of Jesus Christ, the resurrected Christ. He's not there. He is risen. He is offering us the eternal gift uh, of salvation, the eternal gift of life forever in the, uh, the, the presence of God Almighty. And people approach that and they say, how in the world am I supposed to get that? And they look over here and, and, and such and such preacher from such and such is saying, listen, all you got to do is just be good. And in such and such preacher, uh, my step-grandmother, okay, she went to the, some uh, seminary thing online, and she says, well, if I'm feeling good that day, then I'm saved that day. But if I'm kind of down and dumped, then maybe I need to get saved again. I said, Grandma, you're crazy. And then she punches me in the face. I'm just kidding. Hey, but think about it. People are teaching, and they're detouring people away from the gospel of Jesus Christ. And what happens? We, we, we see uh, what the description is for these ladies as they approach the tomb, as they go. He says, he is risen. He's not here. Behold the place where they laid him. Verse number seven, though. But go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him as he saith unto you. This is, this is the step. This is the step in verse number eight that we got to really grasp a hold of. And they went out quickly. They went out quickly. Right? I mean, sure, they, they fled from the sepulcher, for they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. For when Jesus was risen early in the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, uh, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went and told them that she had been with him, and they mourned and wept. And they, uh, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. What? He's what? I can't, I can't believe that he rose again. They, they, they were having a hard time grasping this resurrection power. Right? And we, I mean, I, I'm making this, this point. I mean, we as Christians, we get to a point and we've never experienced dead things coming back. So well, I've been saved, but man, this, this relationship that I was in, it died. God, God can't bring that back. Man, this, this, this issue that I have with uh, whatever it is, this addiction, man, I, I, I'm dead in this stuff. I can't come back from that. Man, uh, this, this friend of mine, man, he's fallen so far away from God. He's just, he's dead to me. I, he can't come back from that kind of stuff. 
And we as Christians say, yeah, they can't. They're too far gone. There's, there's no way. Right? And people come into churches and, and they sit there and we look at them and we go, there's no way God's going to save that person. Why in the world would I tell somebody in the line at Walmart about Jesus Christ? Man, I heard an awesome one. I'm going to start doing it. Okay, this lady goes to the Walmart checkout and she's talking to the cashier. Uh, some cashiers will still talk to you. Okay, and she'll say, man, I'm having a hard time deciding which candy bar to get. What's your favorite? And the cashier will tell her she'll buy the candy bar and then she'll give it to her with a track and say, here, have a wonderful day. I hope to see you in church sometime. Man, that's awesome. How easy is that? Man, when I go and I buy suits, if I have tracks on me, right? I'm putting tracks in the suit pockets as I try them on. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Nobody wears suits anymore, so I don't know if they're getting red. Hey, Goodwill, check this out, right? Goodwill's good, right? Hey, put, put those things in there. I don't shop at Goodwill, brother. Wherever you go. J.C. Penney's, Right? Whatever it is, man, we have such an opportunity to detour people back to a living Christ. And we can look at these lost and dying situations. Man, some of us in here have experienced some, what we could say, deathly situations. I don't see how I could ever come back from something like this. Man, this relationship, this frustration, this bitterness, this anger, whatever it is, you say, I don't know how. And some of us have experienced that because Christ offers it to us. He offers us the ability to come back to him. Forgiveness. Amen. And we, and we can, through our own experiences, then tell other people that Christ can and will save you if you trust in him. And how exciting is that? But we have to be ready. He is risen. He's not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way. What, what way are you supposed to go? Who is it that you know you should be telling about Christ? Who is it that you know? Uh, I, I've had a burden to, to, to start uh, speaking to my brother-in-law. Right? And I'm, I'm trying to find the end. Because, you, I mean, you do have to be sensitive on certain relationships. Right? You can't just walk up to everybody that you love and be like, Bless God, Jesus saves you. Okay? You want to at times. Believe me. Right? Because, hey, as a Christian, I want to spend eternity with the ones that I love and care about. Even the ones I don't really care about. I still want them to go to heaven, amen? Just don't talk to me till we get there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's horrible. That's so bad. I'm just teasing, kind of. Okay, but think about it. We get such an opportunity to tell people about Jesus Christ and we have to be sensitive to the fact, man, which, which detour are you on right now? Let me try to get you, here, here, here's, here's Christ's GPS. Amen. Amen. Let, let's get back to where it starts for you. Love, forgiveness, grace. Man, God wants you to spend eternity with him in heaven. I was just talking to somebody and I won't mention names, maybe I'll look. <clears throat> but uh, <laughs> he said, man, you, you had it. It was going great this morning. It was a wonderful service. Then you got to the point you said, you could spend eternity with me. You lost me. I said, oh, that hurts. <laughs> but you get to, amen. <laughs> what dead things have you experienced coming back in your life? You know, we, we witness things coming back to life on a constant basis. We do. Flowers, plants, right? Vegetation, whatever. Perennials, right? Why do they come back? Because their roots are strong enough, right? Beneath the, the, the temptuous winds, beneath the storm, beneath the frigid cold, beneath all of the struggles and frustrations and everything taking place, those roots are strong enough that once they get a glimpse of that sun again, Right? That, that, that warmth, that, that uh, let's put it this way, that love. Man, they start popping back up. Man, we have God in us, and we need to show people the love of God. The love of Christ. Detour back to Jesus. Hey, because guess what? That tomb, it is empty. Amen? 
He is risen. What a wonderful thing that we get to know him as our personal Lord and Savior. Hey, Christian, where, where are you struggling right now? What do you feel is dead? Man, I, I can't get through the situation. That, that's, that saying is so dangerous, right? God could never bring this. God could never save. God could never help. God could, oh, I would never say that. Yeah, but maybe the way you're acting says it to those around you. Man, imagine Mary going back and, what's wrong? Ah, oh, man. Christ gone. We're done. It's over. Right? And they tried. Right? But man, go, go and see for yourself. Hey, go and tell. That's our job. We get to do that. Help somebody else come to a saving knowledge. Bring them back to life. Amen. Let's pray tonight and then we'll be dismissed. Lord, I'm just so grateful for tonight. Just a chance to just celebrate Easter. Or just to sing some songs. Just to have some fun. Lord, but I, I pray as we get to those, those road close signs, so to speak. Those, those things that make no sense. We don't know all the details. We don't know uh, the, the which way to go. Help us to always focus on you. To follow you. To help others find you. Lord, tonight, I, I don't know if anybody in here is struggling with their salvation. There's always a chance. Lord, I just pray for that individual. Maybe they don't know you as their personal Lord and Savior. Maybe, maybe they don't know for sure if they died, they'd go to heaven. Lord, I pray they get that settled tonight. Maybe there's some dead Christians walking around. Maybe they forgot about that resurrective power that's in them. Lord, I pray that you just strengthen us as a church family, as a church body, that we can be such a, a wonderful, strong, and healthy, um, Lord, just example of who you are. Lord, be with this time of invitation now. In Jesus' name, amen.